Madam Speaker. The member for Rockingham. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, and thank you to members on both sides of this place for the warm welcome to my first week of Parliament. As I rise for the first time today, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Wadjuk people of the Noongar Nation as the traditional owners and custodians of the country on which this house stands, and I pay my respect to Noongar elders past and present. This always was and always will be Aboriginal land. It is the greatest honour of my lifetime to have been elected to represent the people and community that I grew up in and love dearly, the people of Rockingham. And it is an honour to make history as the 30th woman elected to this parliament, giving women the majority of representation in this house for the first time. <laughs> women make up more than half the population and we deserve to have seats at any decision making table. I'm also proud to be the first woman to represent Rockingham. I'm thankful to all the brave women who have come before me and I'm excited to serve my community in this place alongside the other incredible women here. The seat of Rockingham was first created in 1974 and ever since it has always been represented by a Labor member. I would like to thank the former members for Rockingham, Mike Barnett and Mark McGowan for their service to my community and I give them my commitment to continue their legacy by working every day to improve the quality of life for the people I serve. I want to thank Mark McGowan for his support and guidance during my campaign and to wish him and his family all the best for the future. Rockingham and Western Australia are undoubtedly better, safer and stronger for his service. My mum has always been my role model and biggest inspiration. She is someone who, for life, um, sorry, she is someone who life hasn't always been easy for, but who has always remained strong. She lives her values daily, she lights up every room she's in, and she brings joy to everyone around her. When things got personal during the campaign, my mum encouraged me to stay strong and reminded me that kindness always wins. I owe my mum so much, and I hope to leave as kind a footprint on the world, this world and the people around me as she has. For a while, it was just Mum and I in Coolangup. I was born into a single parent family and Mum worked hard to support me on a solo income in her late 20s. Luckily, it didn't take too long until she met the man I now call Dad while working as a public servant in Rockingham. Dad has been in my life since before I was three. He's the father to my two younger sisters, Sophie and Summer, and is the only father I've ever known. Ahead of getting married last year, he legally adopted me, so he's now officially Dad. The Rockingham community has given me so much and has been home my entire life. There is no better place in the world to live, work and enjoy life. Like many young couples, my husband Jake and I chose to stay in Waikiki when we purchased our first home due to the area's close proximity to the beach, its strong sense of community, its affordability and its connection to local amenities like the Rockingham train line. It's a wonderful local community and a beautiful place to raise a family, something we hope to do one day. I've always been motivated by my values of fairness, equality, and most importantly to me, equal access to opportunity. I strongly believe that we all have the right to be treated equally and to be given a fair go, regardless of race, gender, religion, where you were born, who you love, or any other status. I will fight for equal access to opportunities for the rest of my life, and I will use my time in this place working to ensure that future generations growing up in Rockingham like I did have even better opportunities for local study, work and play. My mum went to Quinana Senior High School, but left school after finishing Year 10. At the time, all girl students, regardless of how academic they were, were encouraged by their teachers to leave at that age and get jobs as secretaries, which is what she did. My parents wanted us girls to have better opportunities in life than they did, and they believed that the first step was having a quality education. Thanks. They worked hard to make that a reality. They supported us on a single income and afforded us a quality education. We didn't have a lot of money as a family growing up, but I never remember going without. And as my mum has always said, all you need is love. I spent my entire schooling life at Tramby College in Baldivis. At Tramby, I studied Indonesian language from year three onwards and had a wonderful teacher, Ibi Richardson, who linked us with a sister school in Surabaya and offered us exchange programs with their students. It was my love of Indonesian language and their people that led me to Murdoch University, where I studied Asian studies with a minor in Indonesian language. During my studies, I spent a semester abroad studying at Universitas Gajamada in Yogyakarta and volunteered in my spare time teaching English at a school for underprivileged students. Those students taught me that education isn't just about sitting in a classroom and learning lessons. For so many, education cultivates hope and increases the possibilities and opportunities for a brighter future. It was at university that I started to become more politically minded. I looked around at the political leadership of the time and didn't feel like my values were being represented. 
I started to reflect on my own life and came to the conclusion that a lot of the opportunities I'd benefited from were a result from Labor governments. Like the train line to Rockingham that connected me and so many others in my community to more opportunities for study and work. And the hex scheme that meant I could afford to be the first person in my family to go to university. Or Medicare, which has always ensured my family has access to healthcare, public health care when we need it. So in 2014, at the age of 19, I joined the Labor Party and began volunteering and working on campaigns with like-minded people. In my experience, young people care deeply about political issues. All the young people I know care about their future and having access to well-paid, long-term jobs. They want strong action on climate change, supportive mental health services, access to the housing market and integrity in politics. And they want a progressive society that reflects their values. As the youngest member sitting in either chamber of this place, I hope to bring a fresh perspective to debates and to support young Western Australians in the challenge they face. I'm passionate about supporting the most vulnerable in our communities and making sure no one is left behind. As members of this place, we should always prioritise listening to those that are marginalised and working to address their issues with real outcomes. It is for this same reason that I campaigned in support of marriage equality in 2017 that I will be supporting the Voice to Parliament later this year to fight against discrimination that takes away agency from those affected. The Voice to Parliament is a positive and practical proposal that will give Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander um, people the ability to have a say in the policies that affect their lives. I'm confident that by listening to the experience, knowledge and wisdom of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, we will better develop policies that make a real difference to their lives and benefit us as an entire nation. I've always had a love of sport. It brings people together and is a central part of any thriving community. From cooling up little athletics, hockey at the Rockingham Redbacks, many netball seasons at Mike Barnett Stadium and soccer at Rockingham City Football Club and the Warmer Strikers, sport has always been a big part of my life. I'm still passionate about football, the world's football that is, and I started my women's team at the Bad Ivers Districts Football Club six years ago. I'm still committed to my team, the Divas, and I want to give them a shout out for keeping me sane during the campaign with plenty of banter at training and our Sunday afternoon games. We're currently top of the ladder with five games to go, so let's go Divas. <laughs> As I've said already, I'm a strong believer in equality and equal access to opportunities, and sport should be no exception. Every kid should be able to experience the thrill of playing community sport and belonging to a team. I'm proud to have coached the Disability Inclusive team at my football club for the inaugural two years of the United Reds Football League. For most of the kids in that league, it was their first positive experience playing sport and I could see a new world of opportunities open up for them as they created friendships and meaningful memories. I was raised in a sports mad family and I was always encouraged to pursue whatever sport interested me. Although I didn't have the privilege of watching the Matildas play while I was growing up, thanks to my dad, I never felt like I was any less a player than the boys. My dad is the biggest supporter of women in sport that I know. From the get-go, he has always prioritised women's participation in whatever capacity he can, as club president, to ordinary committee member, or as coach. Dad has never shied away from an argument about putting the women's game on the main pitch or been too afraid to make hard decisions that are in the best interests of our players. If given the choice, I don't think Dad would have chosen had to have three daughters, but he's the best girl Dad I could imagine. <laughs> the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup is paving the way for a new sporting culture in Australia. It's been heartwarming to note that young girls growing up around Australia are watching women play professional sport and seeing that as an opportunity for their own lifetime. The Matildas have shown young girls that they can be competitive, strong, feisty, athletic and ambitious on and off the pitch. I'm extremely proud of the Matildas and I'm proud to see young girls at my football club and in my local community watching on and daring to dream and envision more opportunities for their future. Protecting and investing in our strong public health system is of the utmost importance. Like many amateur football players, I suffered a few injuries in my time, including two full ACL tears, one in each knee. I've had both ACL reconstructions completed in the public health system with the most recent operation in December last year. Our public health system is world class and I'm proud to join the Cook Labor government that is making a record investment in health. An area of health policy that I care strongly about is women's health. It is a privilege to have been elected to this place in time to vote in support of the abortion reform legislation bill 2023. Abortion is health care and every person should have access to free, safe and accessible abortion services when needed. 
come from a proud union family with both my parents having been members of the unions for their entire working lives. My first job after university was working for the Transport Workers Union, making welfare checking calls to their members who were often doing long shifts on the road. These workers are often subjected to poor and unsafe working conditions, despite the essential work they do. We saw during the pandemic that transport workers carry Australia and that without them, Australia would come to a stop. I strongly believe in the power of trade unions for good. A fist is stronger than five single fingers and collectively we can achieve so much more together. I spent the last six years working alongside the McGowan Labor government, first as an electorate officer to the member for Balcatta, David Michael, and then as a campaign organiser at WA Labor. I noted the discourse during the campaign that I have no real world experience and I pay it no mind. I feel privileged to have had the opportunity to serve the community, often helping those that are most vulnerable and working to deliver better solutions at an individual and broader level. I've seen firsthand from working with the member for Balcatta what it takes to be a great local member. Passion for your community, commitment to your values and pride in your local area. He's undoubtedly one of the best members this place has ever seen and is one of the best campaigners in this state. I owe my thanks to the entire Barcata team for everything I know about campaigning and political life. Thank you to David, Linda O'Shalem, Andrew O'Donnell and Ben Coates for your years of friendship and wisdom. Over the course of the short by-election campaign, I had the pleasure of meeting thousands of Rockingham locals. We door knocked every single day, knocking on over 10,000 doors as a campaign and we made over 8,000 phone calls to Rockingham voters. Our campaign connected with Rockingham locals about the issues that matter cost of living relief, boosting public housing, protecting the local environment and investing in our schools and hospitals. Rockingham deserves to have access to the best education, quality local jobs, strong public health care and state of the art facilities. And I'm excited to get on with the job for delivering these services to our community, starting with the $100 million in upgrades to our local high schools at Rockingham and Safety Bay, and the $10 million investment in the expansion of the Bike Marnet Sporting Complex, which means more local kids can play sport right where we live. Rockingham is built on community spirit. Over the course of the campaign, I had thousands of conversations with Rockingham locals who volunteer their time to improve their community and are involved in their local clubs or in community groups. I met with people who volunteer at local not-for-profits to provide groceries to those in financial hardship. I met people who volunteer marking lines at their local sporting club, a job I know all too well. And I met with people who run free programs for seniors to keep them engaged both physically and socially. Our community is one that looks after others. We come together to support those in need and ensure we leave our area and its people better than we found them. The Rockingham electorate is home to HMAS Stirling on Garden Island, Australia's largest naval base. We will be at the forefront of the Australia's AUKUS pathway, providing an enormous opportunity to diversify our local economy and build the workforce of the future right here in Rockingham. The electorate of Rockingham is also home to one of, the state, one of our state's key industrial precincts, the Rockingham Industry Zone. The RIS was the first industrial estate in Western Australia, is the largest in Australia and is a national leader in sustainable industrial development. This industrial zone plays a crucial role in supporting Western Australia's economic growth and provides local opportunities, local job opportunities for people in the Rockingham community. There's a lot of exciting projects already underway, including the state's first waste to energy plant uh, that's due to open in early 2024, lithium battery manufacturing and hydrogen and ammonia production. There is a lot to be proud of in Rockingham. As all members in this place would know, campaigns require many hands and minds. I want to thank the many volunteers and supporters who came door knocking, made phone calls, donated, put up a yard sign, handed out how to vote cards in the miserable weather at early voting or helped out on election day. Thank you to my volunteers, Kira Crawford, Callum Baxter, Matthew Harris, Annie Petter, Councillor Rob Schmidt, Eloise Braskich, Carrie Canlan, Jaden Williams, James Hewitt, Jake Rogers, Vic Smith, Denise Hendon, Margaret Sweeney, Bob Marks, Jen Rowell, Joe Laukinen and Emma Bowers. There were many more and I give you all my sincere gratitude. I want to thank the entire WA Labor team for supporting me and running our positive campaign. Thank you in particular to Brock Oswald for being my outstanding campaign manager and for keeping me focused and level-headed when things happened outside of my control and I'll miss working with you. 
To my field organiser, Michael Delecki, thank you for hitting the pavement with me every single day. We door knocked in every suburb and almost every SA1 in the electorate, and if we didn't run out of time, you would have kept us going. I'm excited to continue working with you in Rockingham and to get back out door knocking soon. Thank you to my co-campaign directors, WA Labor State Secretary, the first woman WA Labor State Secretary, Ellie Whitaker, and the now acting WA Labor State Secretary, Lauren Kayoon. Ellie set the campaign up and positioned us for success before taking maternity leave to bring us the newest WA Labor team member, William Edward Whitaker Scaife. <laughs> and Lauren brought the campaign home and made sure we finished strong while having a bit of fun at the same time. They are two of the strongest strategists WA Labor has ever seen and I'm proud to have had the opportunity to work for them. I'm here today standing on the shoulders of the women who've come before me. I want to acknowledge and thank all the powerful women in my life who have helped me get here and in particular say thank, thank you to the women who provided me advice and guidance during the campaign. Thank you to Alana McTiernan, Madeline King, Kate Douse and Lorna Clark. I also want to thank two strong young Labor women that played an instrumental role in supporting me in the early days of my journey in the Labor movement all those years ago. Thank you to Georgia Tree and Hope Smith for your ongoing friendship and support. Thank you also to the core team members who gave the campaign your all. Thank you Tom Byer, Ali White, Lucas Martin, Ebony Short, Henny Smith, Catherine Fisher, Shudia Forgel, Lisa Tibbs, Carolyn Easton, Sha Shaquille Sterling and my neighbour Daniela Pusevich. It was a massive team effort and I hope you all join me again in 2025. <laughs> 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 oh. uh, Madam Speaker, may I please have an extension? Extension granted. Thanks. I also want to thank Premier Roger Cook for his support during my campaign. The Premier gave me support from day one and was in fact the first Labor member I ever volunteered for back in 2015. And of course I want to say thank you to the Mighty Trade Union Movement for supporting my campaign. In particular I want to thank Tim Dawson and the Transport Workers Union for supporting me early on and backing me every step of the way. Thank you also to the Shop Distributive and Allied Employees Association of WA, the Australian Workers Union, the Construction, Forestry, Mining and Energy Union, the Australian Manufacturing Workers Union, the United Workers Union, the Maritime Union of Australia and the Australian Services Union. To my mum and dad, thank you for your unwavering love and support. I know it wasn't easy for to, have, to have your daughter scrutinised in the public eye, but I hope I made you proud. To my sisters, Sophie and Summer, thank you for keeping me humble as only sisters can. <laughs> You're two of the best women I know and I love you so much. To my growing Marshall family, thank you for always being there for me. Thank you to Tom, Chloe, Zach, Ada, Lee, Moses, James, Sage and the campaign baby Charlotte for all your love. There is nowhere in the world I would rather be at the end of the day than on the shores of Waikiki watching the sunset over the Indian Ocean. And there is nowhere I'd rather, no one I would rather watch that sunset with than my husband Jake. Jake and I have been together since year 12 when we met playing at the Rockingham City Football Club. That was more than 12 years ago. We've since travelled the world together and had many adventures, big and small, and we know that there is nowhere we would rather live than in Rockingham with our two fur babies, Dorothy Elizabeth and Ziggy Stardust. <laughs> always supporting my dreams and for delaying our honeymoon so that I could run for parliament. You're the best and I love you so much. <laughs> and finally, thank you from the bottom of my heart to the people of Rockingham for putting your faith in me. As your member, I will continue to be a strong local voice for us in government and I will use my platform to improve our community and build on Labor's proud legacy of improving the opportunities available for the people in our community. I'm here to work hard to listen to the needs of our locals and to fight for a decent life and job for all in my community for generations to come. Thank you. seats for a brief moment here uh, because I think this is a very special occasion. Uh, one, one element of the specialness is that all 59 members are in the chamber. Oftentimes, I mean, it, 
most of the time somebody's got a pair, it's flu season, there's things happening. So that in itself is momentous. But this is the first time that we've actually had 30 women and 29 men in this chamber. <laughs> Now I know, uh, and I also noted the, uh, the, uh, that it's becoming a habit with uh, members for Rockingham needing to um, delay their honeymoon. <laughs> perhaps Jake can share notes with Sarah on that one. Uh, but uh, it is a special occasion. Uh, Magenta, I know that you, many people here wanted to thank you. We have got other business to get on with, so I'd ask people to perhaps exit the chamber to do that. And, uh, I'll call government business orders of the day.